Thank you for coming to our. Oh, there's another person, right? Just in time. Just in time. We were just about to get started. So, welcome to our Q and A. So, you're coming from Start Engine, and we're here to explain why our semiconductor chip company is an amazing opportunity for you to enter this massive $1 trillion market. It's thanks to our four decade waiting breakthrough. And right here we have Desmond Wall, our founder and CEO, Nick Pierne, our director, and also one of our members of our board, Bill, here to really explain things for you and make sure you know why this company is a great opportunity for you guys. Uh, starting with Desmond, can you guys introduce yourselves? All right, thank you, DJ. Um, greeting everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Chi Wong, CEO of Transip. My experience has been in the semiconductor industry for over 30 years and has always involved in bringing advanced technology into a new business like uh, wireless, GPS, uh, power management device, and 3D system in package. And uh, so I am. I have uh, uh, like six patents and uh, got multiple awards winning in the industry, uh, in my history. So nine years ago, the business started as a consultancy for semiconductor companies. A customer came to us and told us about an unsolved noise problem in their wireless IoT chips, um, but there wasn't a solution. We took on the challenge and eventually realized noise has a third dimension in time. So we seized the opportunity and capitalized on it in a $600 billion semiconductor chip business. Um, then in a, so in the next 30 minutes, uh, we are going to uh, tell you and share with you more on how, why, and what, um, you know, and answer your question too. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nick, Nick Pian. I've, I've been involved in the electronics industry for 45 years, gosh, perish the thought. Um, and I've always been involved in looking at the market opportunities for new technology, trying to see what the impact of new electronics technology is. And in, in the transit case, Harmony, it's quite clearly something that is very exciting, maybe, maybe even a unique opportunity. And you'll find out more about that as we develop. Um, let me pass you on to Bill, Bill Burr. Nick, thank you very much. And Des, also thanks for, for giving a, a bit of background on the company. Guys, uh, I'm Bill Burr. I'm head of operations here at Transip. I have uh, almost 50 years experience in electronics design and manufacturing, ranging from undersea control systems to enabling technologies for the mobile device revolution. I'm an active investor with a background ranging from the factory floor to the corporate boardroom. And I'm currently responsible for our world-class manufacturing supply chain, as well as some of our corporate affairs. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, and for my introduction, I'm DJ. I'm just going to be your host and guiding us through our Q&A today. So before we get started with um, some of the nitty gritty, we're going to sh just share something really exciting. We did really <coughs> recently, just in mid-March, mid we attended the American Power Electronics Convention. And Desmond, can you explain, or Nick, why, why this was so important for us? I'll explain this one. Yeah, that is, I mean, because basically Harmony is is essential in enabling the development of battery and harvested energy systems um, in, in lower power communications and the next generation of high speed digital. And the key to it all is a really zero noise on the power rail. And that's what we, we're offering. And of course, inevitably, thence the importance of APEC, the electronics power show. So the power show is, is really where our offering becomes a key parameter so hence APEC and then the, and the stories that come up from APEC. Yes, and that's how we were able to establish contacts with some of the giants of the semiconductor industry, including, uh, oh, this is our Desmond making those important contacts. And we were able to get contacts with giants such as Corvco, uh, Texas Instrument, 
and analog devices. Desmond, would you like to share your? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, actually, the experience came off from this year was excited and also something very unexpected too, because every year actually we participate in the Advanced Power Electronics Conference since 2016. And actually 2016 was a memorable moment because it was also the time we demonstrate to people we had that noise breakthrough discovery. So that was also the show we announced that in two, that back to 2016. And this year was a little bit different because uh, in the past, uh, most of things are related to noise or control system, you know, um, you know, performance, something like that. But this year, everything was high power, extremely high power, minimum hundreds of watts common thousand of board. Okay. And then at the very first time, you know, at the very first moment when we came in and chat, you know, chat with the people, we, you know, we, we, <laughs> we thought we were misplayed, right? Because we, we are working in noise, but not that high power. But however, and very interesting, when we talked to TI and end of the wire or even Quovo, and then they all has the same story and telling us, okay, high power system is actually very, very noisy because it's very high power, it's easy to generate a lot of noise, but the performance of high power system related to how good the control system is a feedback control system can perform. That is no voltage and there isn't a good solution, satisfactory solution on the market to deal with that. So we suddenly discover, okay, now this is another new area we didn't thought, but surely it's a new opportunity for transit as well. So we are excited, really excited about that. One of the things which which came out of APEC, uh, which really uh, which which really was very very interesting for our company, we've been focusing primarily on opportunities in the portable and remote electronic space because that's where things like battery life and uh, cohabitation, that is cohabitation when, you, when you've got RF and, and digital processing uh, become, become major issues. What came out of, of APEC is the autonomous vehicle industry, and in particular the electric vehicle industry is managing these very high power levels. And so, we what what Desmond came and what the team came back from Orlando with was the prospect of a completely new market segment for the for for our for the company that that we're all participating in, you guys as shareholders and we as 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 the operating management. Yeah. Yeah, the APAC was all about controlling the motor, controlling the vehicle, and also from the solar type of power generation. And I want to make it clear that we were able to attract the attention of these players in the industry, not just because we had this fascinating product. Yes, we do, but also because we do have a history. Our company already has a history of mass manufacturing quality, quality chips and noise solutions to companies such as Tektronix, Matrix, Raycon. We were endorsed by Ublox. So we are truly an established player in this market. And now we are gaining more and more market traction. And that's what you guys as investors are here for, to help us build our market share and grow as a company. Yeah. And Nick, can you take it off with how we are starting to transform these contacts into our customers? Uh, Nick, you're muted. <laughs> here, here we have the handout for the show. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and the interesting thing is that the handout itself is quite a substantial structure because of the of the, the this layout of the, the you know the the layout of the of the mechanism. Uh, but in fact, the core of it and what really takes the place, the harmony, is is a tiny, a relatively tiny component, you can see it there. Um, and in fact, the, the um, competition, such as it is, um, 
tries to create a band that gap of device with an array of passives. Um, and here they are, you can see the massive array of passives. No, in fact, <clears throat> these massive arrays can be outperformed by this single chip, the single chip device in the system. Um, and there's another example of this. Just, so those three arrays are basically substituted and outperformed by a single Harmony device. Um, I'll, in I'll fact, jump if you, in here from a manufacturer sure. perspective, if I may, Nick. Uh, Please. This is a big deal. This is a big deal because uh, what it means is that all the components that we're seeing on that slide on the, in, the, in the picture on the, on the left are being substituted by one device, which is much smaller. Now, the numbers are self-evident. We can all see them up there on the slide. But what that means in manufacturing is that we've got a greatly streamlined bill of materials. We have a significant reduction in what are called defect opportunities. There are less solder joints. There are less things on the board that need to be tested. It's a real game changer. Sorry, Nick, just- Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I'm just gonna cite one or two examples. Um, DJ, if you can get out to the um, iPhone board, which mm -hmm. gives you some idea of just how much material it is <laughs> Sorry, there we go. How much? How much of the space is taken up with with passives? Thank you. you can wi wind back again to because um, Des, if you want to have a look at the tell us a bit more about the performance characters, the the advantages performance that, that we make. Yeah. So Nick, are you asking me? Yes, Des. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. So with that replacement, okay, from the previous slide. Um, one in one of the each of the array took about 15 components so versus we only need three components so one component from us and another, another two caps so just three components so this is all about how much noise can be taken out by this topology uh yes dj could you scroll to the next line so this these are the comparison on the attenuation level so lower means the better and wider means the, the, uh, is, is great. Okay, so the curve on the top is made by the discrete component with that 15 kind of that. Uh, Harmony is uh, is the product name of our transit pi solution is the one so the lower one at the bottom. In, in average, it give more 10 dB more attenuation across the whole 6 gigahertz spectrum. So that means not only we save the enormous spot space 93%, but the overall noise elimination capability is five times more, you know, 10 dB more. So, and, uh, you know, reliability, the last, like what Bill just has explained in terms of manufacturing reliabilities, the last component is always deserved to keep the reliability of the system. And as as so, this idea of reducing a 10 dB uh, a 10 dB reduction compared to the other product or that might not yeah more uh, yeah. oh ten, sorry 10 dB more 10 dB, 10 dB more than more. the discrete you yes. you see like at the very low side you see uh, uh, what our solution the harmony achieve is already at minus 100 dB across a uh, life about from one megahertz up to one gigahertz so even from that spectrum from one megahertz to one gigahertz that already below at minus 100 dB if we count from the measurement spectrum from 30 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz th th those are below 50 50 dB all right so when you compare that curve, we be, we, the R curve is much lower than the discrete solution and only took three components to accomplish that. So this well, is, let's, yeah, let, this let's, is let's, let's calibrate this for, for our investors, Des, mm. because, uh, you know, we're looking at 50 dB, 100 dB. Well, what does that mean? I mean, how good is, mm. how, how much better are we at, in, in terms of orders of magnitude? Let, uh, uh, DJ, go back to that to that slide. We'll just take it one one or two uh, more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, one hundred dB. What does that mean? All right. So one hundred dB basically is already means forbidding any noise 
to exist in that fashion. Okay. Uh, 100 dB in many measurement in the measurements world is already at the lowest level of many equipments today. All right. So unless we are able to upgrade our equipment much lower noise than that, so we are not able to see anything more than that. So this this thing is okay for for investment standpoint for significant. So what significance is now the market especially many semiconductor vendor, the more features they come up and the trend of the market is a lot more data, higher speed, capacity, and the density is increasing, along with the operating voltage are diminishing. So the problem of noise would only become bigger. Now, the problem on the market is using the conventional capacitor, inductor, ferrite bit, okay, to eliminate the noise, just like the most advanced TI erosion board they made for customer to demonstrate this profile. The, um, so in the end, the market just consume more and more discrete component so DJ, could you show the next pictures? Uh, not this one, the phone uh, for the iPhone, the, the, the tear down. Yeah, this one. This is a very good example. Why the smartphone today are so heavy, all right? One of the contribution is because the ceramic capacitor, ceramic itself is, is heavy. In, a smart, in any of the smartphone today, just using ceramic capacitor are over a thousand of them. And, and this board is already from the uh, iPhone 6. Now we are with the iPhone 14. The kind of the ceramic components are, 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 are skyrocket. And those are chip components, right? Or rel relatively cheap, okay? Not really that cheap, but relatively cheap. So that low cost components are occupying 40 to 50 percent of the very variable PCV watt space. So they are not adding function, but just occupy the space. So imagine that we perform better and we can help them to save that 50 percent spot space. That means in the coming future, in the coming future, smartphone can add a lot more high value features rather than using space like that. So this is the opportunity of chance. Okay. So that is why it's significant to, to provide that very high level of noise attenuation capability in a very, very small space. That is our breakthrough. And do you want to quickly explain uh, the origins of that from SNJ? Okay, yes. Um, Conventionally, uh, people thought. Okay, conventionally, the people. Uh, you know, uh, no, we, we, uh, you know, we are all trained as uh, electrical engineer, electronic engineer. Uh, you know, from textbooks, meaning noise only has two dimension, amplitude and frequency. Okay, so conventional using the ferrite bit or whatever filter technology capacitor out there is just. We just need to find the right part number to take out certain frequency as lower as possible, right? But we find noise actually has the third dimension in the time domain. That means noise is moving in time. That limits the ceiling of all digital device performance today. So if that component can be lift off, all the semiconductors, especially in the digital tech, actually the performance, their performance will, be, will have a quantum lift. And that has been proven with we, you know, with the industry leader, we just show you, you blocks, Raycon, Tektronix, many of the people. And now we are also working on the 5G. Um, yeah. Yes, and speaking of 5G, I think we already explained how when we're by replacing all of these low value components, not only are we saving PCB space, which is expensive, heavy, costly, we're also making the performance higher. 
And that allows us to give our, our customers a competitive edge within that electronic space, which means more revenue for them, more revenue for us. And it is a win-win situation because we are a new piece of technology that's enabling, enabling better products and better technology. And yes, let's talk about one of our biggest applications, which would be 5G. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'll, I'll pick this one up. And, and five interesting okay. because 5G was heralded as a new mobile capability. But actually, if you see what's going on, it's achieving much, much poorer performance, and often in hundreds of megahertz rather than gigahertz. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of that is just purely because of the, the lack of differentiation between the signal and the noise. Uh, and that's exactly where we fit in. So this 5G itself, both, both in terms of the handsets and in terms of the, the widely distributed um, signal bases, is an opportunity for, for our, our technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would think, uh, I would like to add a little bit. Uh, a little please, bit please do. On uh, maybe a little bit technical, but it's a very good information. Because the background is the whole market is advertising the 5G at a status speed of one gigabit per second. And, and recently, another company mentioned, all right, they can enable 10 gigabit per second. But <coughs> January of this month on the Wall Street Journal, the, there was a the news. Uh, they said the headlines uh, say 5G is a great letdown. Why? Uh, from a report just released in 2022 Q4, the national average of all the 5G devices, mean our phone, you know, whoever make it, the average is only about 100 megabit per second. So you see, you know, when people advertising is one gigabit or even 10 gigabit, but in reality, it's only 10% of it. So what happened, right? So we work with Raycon. So Raycon, uh, who, let me introduce you who they are. Raycon is one of the renowned enterprise that they are making components. All the phone and all the base station must have. It's the oscillator, it's the reference clock. So they have numerous customer support experience. They told us there's a key problem and the real world when this solution go into the market is the noise on the power supply and make the system not performing what they are expected to be, then Raycon and us work together and already achieve some very exciting initial result. Um, improving, so initial data is say, talking about improving the 5G signal five times more using our filter, okay? Using our filter in the existing uh, implementation method. Now, of course, this is not enough and 5G system is very complex. So we take this result, uh, now starting with another 5G lab and then expecting to test this at the system level and see uh, and see more data and share with the industry leader in moving forward with that. So that, that is one of the key business development we are working on now. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Nick. Yeah, yeah. This is the point I would like to add. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, you're, you're muted again. <laughs> the exciting thing is actually that, that how, from my point of view, the exciting thing is the harmony actually works with any device. It doesn't have to be 5G. There are a whole range of devices. Anywhere where you're able to take a, a very fine, small signal against power and the noise and the power. And 5G is, is the, the only effective way of dealing with it. So I'm even, for example, the EMS world, EMS are considering putting 5G and it's putting, sorry, putting harmony Transitive Harmony in as a basic offering for the, the, a range of their um, solutions in terms of the, the layout and the manufacture of boards. So I mean, it's Harmony, it, there's a real opportunity for Harmony to become almost a standard product in, in almost every high speed, low, low power board. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to address that all that different kinds of application are unified 
by just this one technology and very simple and it's very universal. That's mean we are able to minimize our R&D cost, but expand the market in an enormous way. So this technology actually is bonus, okay, in our world is bonus applications. Um, and the cost of it is very low, but the application, because the nature of the application, um, we can price high. Okay, so we are able to keep a high margin on our business. And what good thing is, this thing already in mass production, we already ship more than 2 million chips. So what we are all bring to our investor is a proven business model. Mm -hmm. And so I would just really like to add on to that from them. Mm -hmm. Like like Nick said, it's and the whole idea we're trying to talk about what our end goal is. You see all these capacitors, all these all these low value devices on on basically every single electronic device currently in the world there is a shortage of these capacitors because look how many they're packing on a board in the future and this is our end goal we can replace all of this and just use a couple pieces of our transit harmony solution and that means and eventually our goal is to become the de facto standard when people are designing PCBs, digital devices, they have to worry about noise. And the solution to that is not to pack a bunch of these low value capacitors. The solution is us. We're the de facto standard. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure their device runs perfectly. And that means saving a lot of weight, saving a lot of money, saving a lot of space, making the world greener. And that's really what we're about. And as they said before, we are already established. We have company, we have companies creating smartwatches using our devices. And uh, Desmond, Nick, or Bill, do you want to build off of me on that? Yeah, I jump in here for, for just a second, uh, DJ. Thanks very much for that introduction. We're looking at a smartwatch here, fellas, but um, what we don't see under the hood is that the uh, noise, uh, the, the filtering, the noise abatement slash filtering characteristics of the Transit PI solutions enable a, a wide range of, of power management uh, options. In this particular case, uh, we work with a company that brought the first self-powered smartwatch to the market. The watch runs off of body heat. So if you can imagine what this means in terms of the entire battery uh, food chain, uh, the, the, um, uh, the the amount of power that's necessary to recharge batteries the whole battery industry what the environmental impacts are associated with this if we can reduce the profile of of, of this whole type of activity it definitely supports uh the thesis of sustainability that dj just mentioned but i want to underline that this technology with its uh, filtering and, and noise management capabilities opens up a whole new world of power source and power management. Yeah. I, I would like to jump in to give some figures. Um, conventionally, if, okay, if we Google online, for example, how large is the noise filter market? I can immediately tell you less than 3 billion. Why? Because the conventional noise market is only about offering a certain type of filter, but the primary purpose is just to pass regulation like FCC or EU uh, to mitigate the potential jamming to all other you know, appliances in home or you know, infrastructure, something like that. So that is the conventional noise filter market. So that's why it, it is more. Okay? Our market is completely different. Because what we enable is enabling device manufacturer to achieve a whole new world. What does that mean? Whoever, for example, whoever made CPU, graphic card, or AI, or wireless chips, the, the more they make, 
the more problem they are going to face with the noise and also the the switching noise so that's bit that we discover okay because this is our patented technology that limited the the, the digital the silicon performance so when they need to achieve what they want then our solution will find a place to work with those semiconductor giant so how large is the market now just today it is a 600 billion dollar market and you know the analysis saying uh, for the next 10 years it will grow to become a billion uh, a billion uh, dollar a trillion a trillion, trillion dollar a trillion dollar business so this is our space we are enabling the semiconductor industry to use our filter to to help them to break through on what they are doing now all right, so this is our market space. So that's why we are saying our market space is more than 100 billion. Mm -hmm. And so it's just to like visualize that really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, when, when we're talking about our solution being a noise, a noise solution, that might sound small, but the problem of noise is way bigger than you might think. For example, if you're under a bridge or in the subway, you might realize your phone signal starts losing losing connection. That's a noise problem. That means the electronic signals that are coming in are too noisy for your computer systems to filter it out. When your when your laptop starts overheating, that's usually because those electronic signals are too noisy and they're being run over and over again to fix all these noise problems. But if you can. Uh, solve these problems at the source with a powerful filter such as the one we have we get to shrink these problems in across the whole field and that's why we call ourselves an enabling product we enable things to be faster in the ai space we we enable things to process more for example with chat gpt one that has more processing power is able to process a lot more information have more contextual information and in the hardware space that's exactly what we do um so that's why we have an application across such a large market across consumer electronics security connectivity data computing and automotive we are a digital steroid in all of these places desmond bill nick would you like to add on should we not ask if you want to ask some questions Yes. Um, so we really are excited to work with you and all of our potential investors to expand our business. We have the product. We have the traction in the market. Now it's time for us to take money, market, build up our market reach and expand into this market, acquire customers. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please uh, just unmute yourselves and Ask away. So th this is Chuck Andre. Um, this is really good stuff. I just a 30 minute elevator speech. Um, I'm an engineer. <clears throat> excuse me. I've been in the business for about 40 years. Uh, not not particularly uh, electronics. I'm not electrical engineer, so you guys are far ahead of me on that, but I've been a systems engineer. Um, I work radiation uh, engineering and several other things in both the nuclear industry and in the satellite industry. Um, and just in a kind of encapsulated, it, it it sounds like you got you folks have have worked really hard to develop what I'll call a, a much smarter, better, cheaper noise management uh, solution for electronic devices in in general and and is that is that kind of it in a nutshell well yeah. Chuck, you know if, if you don't have anything else to do you want to come on board and and manage our messaging <laughs> that's uh you, you you just hit the thing right on the spot <laughs> that's it that's it what what's it, what there, there are two elements at the heart of this thing i just just to expand on that and i don't want to you know we've talked enough but just to just so, it, so it's really clear what's going on here. 
there are two two fundamental problems. One it, that we're addressing. One of them is what I call autonomy. That is how long things last. Uh, you know, how many times are we? You know, we're there in traffic and we need Google Maps, and oh my goodness, there's no more battery left in the phone. Yada 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 yada. So we address that. And the reason that we do is because our solution, since it since it has the excellent filtering characteristics that Desmond was outlining earlier. It means that we can that that the digital power, okay, in the in form of switch mode power supplies, which are much more efficient than the forty year old paradigm that most of the energy the most of the the uh, most of the industry operates. Uh, switch mode power supplies can even be used in very noise sensitive applications. So that's one. The second one is where the rubber hits the road in all of these. In, in all, all of these applications, consumer electronics, homeland security, homeland security is an interesting one because there we're faced with a situation where we may have vehicles per, patrolling the perimeter, but we got to be able to hear the bad guys walking around outside in the woods. And if that's not a filtering problem, I don't know what is. So that's so we're we're we're, we're addressing that. In, 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 in the way that Desmond was outlining earlier. But just to, to wrap up the thing with the second major aspect, the, the bottom line on all of this stuff in terms of faster performance, uh, and, uh, and you know, DJ was talking about your computer getting hot, you know, you're losing the signal and so forth and so on. This boils down to something called data convolution. And that is when we take uh, signals in the RF world, and since you're an engineer, you're definitely gonna 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 appreciate that one, Chuck. And we run it through analog to digital conversion. Now, if we've got a lot of junk coming in on top of the RF signal, on top of the analog signal, in other words, if my voice sounds like this, you know, instead of sounding clear, <laughs> then we're gonna really have a problem trying to digitize that so it can then be processed in a digital system. So Transip is doing two things. With the filtering technology, it's enabling dramatic improvements in, in device autonomy. With, the, with, with the, 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 the signal processing or this filtering technology or filtering capability is also dramatically cleaning up the whole analog to digital conversion problem. Thank you, Bill. That's a great answer. Um, just a, a quick follow on question. I have numerous questions. But I'm not going to hog the on the floor, but um, how 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 do you think it's going to handle or, or be able to improve error correction? In the digital world. Error correction. Um, yeah, I'm, you understand you rightly error error correction. Yes, error correction, uh, obviously, when you're you're transmitting and and it's it's the old uh, you know transmitting on on the internet or whatever you're you're uh, the page is looking for air correction and and uh, certainly noise uh, on circuits causes a lot of errors in the in the data transmission. So right, I I can take on that Bill. Yeah, that does does good. Okay, so error corrections means because. When there are or error, so it means already system already receive an error. So what the system can do today is call iteration, right? So whenever we receive an error, just go back, we do the whole process again. So that's called iteration. The problem is the more iteration, the more the power will consume. And most of the time, the most power hungry process is something related to synchronization, or reconnection type of thing. Those power hungry process took a lot of iteration under real world signals. Because real world never get, you hardly get a perfect signal around, right? Because of forest or weather, whatever, blockage, refractor signal, something like that. So the processor in real world running a lot of iteration until it got the right things to be solved mathematic i mean right the, the right solution to be solved what we have proven with the market leader for some new block in gps we shorten the time to at least 25 percent at least 25 percent 
sometimes could be up to five times less than that. That is the thing to have what you just said, the error correction. For example, if originally the algorithm took 100 times, then now it may only take 25 times to complete the job. That is a huge amount of power saving and also oh, accuracy and yeah. And number two, there'll be, I, I, yeah, but there, I, I think the real question is, well, how, what are we doing with, what does what you're describing is the impact that that error correction, the error correction uh, process has on the system. And those are absolutely all uh, ex extremely important and they have to do with power consumption and everything else that you mentioned. Yeah. Chuck is asking, how are we dealing with that? And I think, I think the short answer there is Chuck, there's just less errors to 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 to, uh, to 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 correct because the because the the signal coming in is cleaner. So Desmond's yeah. processes are going to be they're they're they're, they're going to be a lot less of them and they're going to run a lot faster. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just for example, the five G thing we are working on is got. 15 dB high in signal to noise ratio. That means the error is much less. Mm -hmm. Great. We had, do we have any other questions? I see a gentleman, someone named G, and we've got also someone who shares my name of William on board. Uh, do, you, do you folks have any, uh, any, any questions for us here on the floor? So I have a question regarding um, sales. I know we started shipping um, the chips, the processors. Uh, are we close to be on break even point? <laughs> Des, you got to take that one. Okay. <laughs> We're profitable, but Des will tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so far we uh, we are a profitable business. Okay. Since 2019, um, yeah, we are not. Yeah, so so break even is not a question for us so far. The only question is we we like to accelerate our market expansion. Okay, um, so that is so. I also want to address this thing. Any viable business can tell by the cash, how much cash the business can generate. So. We have proven that, and and we are also a very conservative guy. You know, you know, we always look at our bottom bottom line. Um, so that's number one. Uh, so we safeguard. We have we implement a very um, conservative financial restriction to ourselves to look at our bottom line, and then we accelerate our growth. Okay. So like this year, we already achieved a. Uh, I would say uh, impressive business de developments. Uh, like we already engaged with one of the world top three analog device manufacturing. Uh, we already shipped them sample because they are also looking the same way we are seeing. Uh, they want to explore how our filter technology can enhance their business. Okay, and then um, we already and we 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 work with one of the world top three EMS who are also making the radio module for iPhone. And we have been doing business with them for three years on a smaller project. We recently engaged with more business unit with them. Uh, so they, they got more understanding uh, what our future does. Uh, another excitement is 5G we already mentioned, okay. Another thing is the Homeland Security. Oh, well, we got a new uh, Desmond uh, DJ call uh, to help that. Um, yeah. And also, our solution has been used in Homeland Security system made for the government, uh, US government, and also uh, another nation may come on board as well, a different system, okay, but we got two countries. Uh, in our technology. So any of these thing can go into production. Our sales will be skyrocket. This is what we are doing now. So the 
So I yeah, hope. I think, I think one way to, to describe that is we're looking at a real potential hockey stick here. The, you know, the question, the, the question was, what, what's, are, are we profitable? Well, yes, we, we are, thanks to, thanks to several factors. One of them is that the guys that you are, uh, who are in on this call are the, you know, we're, we're doing all the work. Uh, we are the, the, um, the, the founding investors of this company. Uh, we are uh, uh, multifaceted with, with, uh, with considerable background. So we're able to cover a lot of the bases that have been necessary to establish a market presence to build a world-class supply chain, to, to form relationships with distributors around the globe, because we've been in the business for a long time. Desmond has done a fantastic job uh, managing the, uh, the, the research and development. We've got a, a, a small laboratory facility. You know, we can't, we're not gonna claim to join the Silicon Valley garage group. We're a little bit bigger than that. But we're really keeping a close eye on on the cash flow and on our expenses, and we're making it. We're making it. We don't owe anybody anything. Des, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yeah, yeah, we, that, that's a good thing. We don't owe anyone. Uh, we don't owe VC. We don't owe the bank. So we are just whatever profit we make, we keep we investing our profit back into the business. So same what we are doing now on Star Engine. You know, we are just using investor money to expand our market present. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah basically basically what, what what you you folks are gonna are, are, are gonna be participating in is is moving up is moving up the shaft of the hockey stick. Because once once uh, if, if some of these things come home and, and I think as Chuck mentioned earlier. Uh, it, it, you know, it looks like there's some really fundamental uh, uh, technology and magic going on here, which could have a significant impact on how uh, electronic, and I've been, again, I've been designing and manufacturing electronics for almost 50 years. And, uh, you know, this stuff, what, what it can do, particularly for the designer and particularly for somebody who's concerned about, and I used this term earlier in the, in the conversation, cohabitation. Just to give you an example of what this means, just for fun. When I was putting myself through through universe through engineering school, I was playing in a in a country rock band, and we were living in a duplex with a with a, a little old lady next door that liked to listen to Johnny Carson and and her polka music in the evenings, and we'd be downstairs in our basement. Uh, uh, practicing, you know. So here you had the great, you had the Grateful Dead, and you had and you had uh, po and poker music, and that, you know, there was a real cohabitation issue there. And we had visits from the local constabulary more than once. But the point is that transit solves that cohabitation problem. Thank you. I uh, I know when we saw the market. Uh, we have the consumer electronic markets, which is like smartphone and uh, smartphone and smart watches. So, uh, are we going to have uh, are we going to have plan to penetrate into that market? For example, to get into the smartphone and all. I know we probably need to add more features, and we may have to do more development. But is that in the pipeline? Well, I think the the important thing to focus on here is that. Uh, now I don't know who I'm talking to. We've had a number of people come in. Uh, oh, I'm that's Bill. that's G. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. So G, you've been you've been on since the beginning. Okay. Well, I think it's been pretty clear through the presentation that we are a component manufacturer, basically. I mean, we're 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 providing uh, we're we're providing power management solutions which go into things. And the answer to your question is that we are already present in uh in 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 the in the smart watch slash sport watch segment the degree of our participation is something that our investors are going to accelerate can i add on to you bill certainly yeah so g i think one of your questions was um what is our plan to get into the smartphone industry could you confirm on me that yes yes so 
there's one thing stopping us from entering the smartphone industry and it's that that industry is really really big and it is hard to get into that contact because when you're dealing with those companies you're talking in terms of hundreds of millions of dollars per per transaction and hence that's why we have you investors to help us bolster our marketing and manufacturing well funds to really get into that market and you kind of asked us do we need to build more features etc well the answer is no because we have the product ready and when we're talking about building features that's not something we do we're a background hardware enabler the ones who are building the features are the smartphone manufacturers when they use our product that enables them to build more features and that enables them to have that enhanced competitive edge, which is why they would want to use our product. But as there, as I'm about to say, we do have a problem. We want to get into this industry and we are going to need the marketing efforts and the sales efforts to get into that space. I'm going to just jump in here if I may, DJ. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, because that's, that's, that's a really good question and that's a very hope high profile market opportunity. But there's a good side and a bad side to that. Uh, I, um, gee, you've been since, with us since the beginning, so you know I've been around for a while. And uh, the, I see the smartphone market as uh, having a number of, of the characteristics uh, which were similar to the automotive market. And we, with one of my former companies, we were a, a, a very active player in the in the leading edge of the of the European tier one uh, automotive suppliers, and that is a dog market. We were we were expected to generate or to, to promise a three percent year over year reduction in, in 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 cost, and it didn't matter what the product was or what the supply chain looked like or or any of the external factors. So while we are looking at the smartphone market, as, as, as DJ has, has, has just said, we are going to, at the beginning, and to, 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 you know, to, create, to, to create, to generate our hockey stick, we're going to be looking at, at areas where we can really add significant value and that are not characterized by the, by the types of, of, of extremely high volume, extremely cost sensitive, a, a purchasing uh, uh, characteristics like the smartphone market. Yeah. I'm not saying we're not going to get involved. You, you asked a very good question, but we've got to be very careful how we allocate your and our resources going forward. Right. So to get in short, to get to the big guy, it, it take a cross to develop the size of the business at the point to match to them. You know, we know this is not today. Our technology can solve the problem, but the business, the size, matching the size, I mean, yeah, is very, another important aspect to go into those corporate giants. So that's why we need investor money to build the business, to build bigger, progressively, and in a safe way, I would say. Yes. Yeah, you save way. This is very important. Yeah, just to, you know, I, I don't want to dominate the thing, but I lived through the I I, I lived through the dot com crash. Mm. You know, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was involved in a, in a company which was which we, we were turning over uh, our, our, our turnover was close to uh, uh, 150 million euros a year. And we were under constant pressure to expand uh, to, to be back when we started working with Nokia, they were still making rubber boots and, tele, and black and white television sets. But in one year we saw, we saw our contract, we had a signed contract for 70 million euros. And at the end of the year, we had shipped 15. So, but the, the, the point is that you have to be very, very, very careful about going after the really big fish, because if they if they turn and bite you, it hurts.
Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. We saw uh, another new owning just came in. Uh, Michael and also William, do you have any other question? Just unmute uh, your mic. So I believe it was Michael who Michael who came in. Michael, are you there? Oh well. But so perhaps he's not really caught up to the thing because he did come in about as we were to start Q and A actually. But I believe William has been here since the beginning. Do we have any more questions? And well, hey, this is Chuck Hondrak again. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I took off my engineer. I took off my engineer's hat and I put my investor hat back on. And <laughs> uh, so, and I think that's a pretty good explanation. One of my questions was, well, how are you going to be dealing with manufacturing and scale up? Which is, you know, it's a it's a nice problem to have, but it it can really bite you. Um, so I I think that was a pretty good answer there. Uh, and it, it's just, you do have to manage that properly, otherwise it will get away from you. Um, without telling any secrets, so to speak, because um, obviously we're, we're investors, but you know we don't necessarily need to know all the deep, dark secrets from a long-term business strategy standpoint. Uh, could you just briefly go through what your long-term business strategy is and what your potential exit strategy is if there's one such as selling off to a larger player as an acquisition target or, or what what are you guys thinking okay um, question, we, Chuck. Why don't, Des, why don't you take that uh, from, from uh, first right. start. yeah that's your cool Yana. all right so yeah let me uh, add a few things here uh, first of all, just excuse me, because according to the SEC regulation, we cannot talk about any projection, you know, because the regulation CF things, but uh, in the big pictures, you know, very big pictures, of course, this is not the only round of our fundraising. Our ultimate goal, I can say, uh, we would want to use uh, the the uh, the available fund in a from the public market, okay, to take this business into the public markets to raise funds. So, so this is the big pictures. And why? The fundamental thing is the breakthrough of this technology. We see that actually changed everything. Okay, I mean, changed everything in the semiconductor industry as well as the electronic industry. Of course, it takes time, okay? When we are able to get to that point, to have more people utilize our technology, that means we will get high market share. Then we will establish our own unique position or representation in the market as a brand name, okay? Uh, just help me, Phil, if uh, I'm not describing this right. Because in, in my experience of business, de business development history, I have seen so many technologies, I say they are fashionable technology. But our is timeless, okay? Because we solve a fundamental problem. That means with the right resources, this business can have a place in the whole industry. So that is the big picture. We want to play it longer and bigger. And this is the long-term strategy of this business. We want, we want to set a new standard in the market, in the short. Yeah, I, I think I think that sums it up, Chuck. If that if that mm -hmm. makes if that makes sense, although I would I would I would put a little bit of, of of perspective on this, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, I the, the key the real key message that that my takeaway from what from Desmond's vision 
mm -hmm. is this concept of timelessness. Okay, and I think that's very important for us, for us all, because, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the day before yesterday, it was autonomous vehicles, uh, you know, today it's artificial intelligence and everybody's looking for the next great thing. And, uh, you know, but what's going on with the metaverse? I mean, I sure am glad I, I, I sold my, uh, my, 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 my Facebook stock some time ago. Okay. But what what's going on here, and, and I don't think we need to beat this to death, Chuck, because you've already identified the fundamental value in, in the product. So I don't think we need to blow that horn any further. If we uh, look at it, 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 all right, go ahead. Yeah, I, I would like to make a real life example. Well, all right, well, just let, let, me, let okay. me finish from, from here. I thought there was Chuck okay. coming in. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I just want to say you you guys you guys are saying all the right words and uh, I, I'm uh, as an investor um, uh, I'm very happy to be part of uh, what you guys are trying to do um, I cheated a little bit I I'm not I'm not also uh, I've not just been an engineer if you will but I uh, started up a couple of my own uh, companies along with a couple other guys I know what you guys are dealing with or i think i do and uh um no i really appreciate uh uh you know what you guys are doing and i appreciate uh your discussion on the long-term strategy because that's that's what i would be looking for rather than a you know short-term exit uh you know stage right kind of thing so um and you have you have a what i would consider a disruptive technology okay and it's not a fad technology which is what i would call the ones that were quoted previously to this so so good job and, and keep it up yes, one, thank you Jeff. Thank you, yeah. just one 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 last thing and i think um which is really imp I, I would think would be very important in the context of your question one of the things to focus on and it's not we're not really talking about that in this in this session uh and if i start talking about things i'm not supposed to everybody make sure you jump on me but transip uh was born as it, it was born out of an opportunity but transip along the along the way has been has been generating you know thanks to our combined experience uh in the electronics industry we have a growing patent portfolio which goes beyond what we're talking about here so when we're so when we're looking at a long term, and we're talking about strategy now and not tactics, this this business has all the potential to be a a, a self-contained business unit. And whether that business unit uh, is is created before uh, before uh, you know a public offering, because if we're going to address the opportunity that we have. We're going to need to access the capital markets. There's no doubt about that. So anybody that's with us now will be along on that journey if they if they if they hang on. But that's just this. That's just this particular technology. There are other technologies uh, in in our in you know in in our grab bag, which as 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 this as as this uh, opportunity starts to spin off cash and as our board of directors and our investors are, are on board with developing the other opportunities that our other technology uh, other technologies represent you know who knows what can happen yeah i also want to add a yeah good point bill i also want to add another point in our long-term strategy in terms of about the business development side related to product now we are in a set, uh, in a component business, but if we are able to get to the point with enough cash on hand, that would not limit us to go directly into the end product market. What do we mean? The end product market could be a consumer product, you know, or even a silicon chip in a system. Because I would want to share one experience. Uh, directly uh, 
when we were participate the uh, the slingshot competition in Singapore. Okay, one of the judge asked us, "Can you apply the technology in a processor, CPU processor?" What he means? It? Yes, absolutely. So that actually sparked, you know, inspire the long term roadmap for us. The only you know, the only obstacle we have today is we, we cannot make processor, right? We are not Intel, we cannot make processor. But if we get to the point we are able to do that and then incorporate this fundamental technology in the processor design, then the performance of that processor is in parallel to anything on the world today. So this is another possibility we are seeing if we have enough cash to fan out the portfolio of our technology based on this breakthrough. So that's why another word I would like to say again, why this is timeless and bindless. Uh, it's not aggregation at all. Okay, I think that that kind of, unless there are some any more questions, I think that's an, an excellent <laughs> summary of the, uh, of, of, of the meeting and the vision. Yeah. So Chuck, if we're if we're good with that, Michael, William, <coughs> you know, thank you very very much for 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 having been here. Uh, you can contact us anytime. Start Engine, uh, of course, has the facilities to do that. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, to the extent that our investors, particularly with experience in our space, feel that they can contribute to the development of the company that we are all building together yeah. we more than welcome that initiative yeah and also because our offering pair is limited um so also please help us you know as a uh, investor existing investor also how to spread our word to any, any other potential investor in your circle that would really help uh, we will appreciate it yeah Great. Well, thank right. you guys very much. I appreciate that. And I, I'm pretty sure the other investors on the line do do also. But uh, again, uh, I'm hearing all the right things. Um, like I said, I've been around a while, and uh, <laughs> you know, good. There's a, good luck is is not necessarily what what you need, but uh, I'll give it to you anyway. And uh, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep in touch uh, as we go along here. Because it's uh, like I said, this looks like a disruptive technology, and I think you guys got your hands around it uh, pretty well at this point. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. We'll be, Thank doing, you. We'll be doing other webinars going forward. It's part of our job to be communicating with our investor community. So stay tuned. All right. Goodbye. All right, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye bye.